Mr. Beast famously said that if they don't click, then they won't watch. And if you've watched any of his content, then you may have noticed that he changes the thumbnail about three to four times in the first 24 hours of launching a new video, which can be the difference between millions of views and a video that breaks records or one that massively underperforms. This is how important thumbnails are, but let's face it, most of us are pretty crappy designers. So recently I decided to see if I could get AI to create amazing thumbnails for me, saving me both time and money. Previously, the AI images looked like a two-year-old had just done a finger painting. Faces and hands look twisted, and overall the quality was pretty low. But a lot has changed, and now most of my thumbnails, at least to some degree, are made by AI. In fact, you'll probably be surprised to know how many big YouTubers are actually now using AI in their thumbnails. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I personally create thumbnails for my branded and faceless channels. I'll put links to all of the free tools I use in the video description, along with additional training on building channels for profit. The first step is image generation. Now, it's worth noting that AI is still pretty crappy at combining both images and text together. So although you are free to try asking it to do everything for you, I'm not going to do that in this video. I'm just going to add the text afterwards using different tools. The first tool you can use, though not my personal favorite, we'll get to that one next, is Adobe Firefly, which at the time of recording this was completely free and you could generate AI images and then add your text effects afterwards. So let's jump inside my computer and get started. So the first thing you want to do is go to Google and it's completely online. You don't have to download anything for Firefly. Type in Adobe Firefly and then you will see the results here and it says it's completely free generative AI for creators. So click on that and then you're going to want to basically get started by setting up your free account by registering your email. So you just click here to get Firefly for free. And then all I need to do is go across to create and I can do a text to video. So that's what I'm going to do. And then it's going to give me all of the different options here. So you can see many different ideas that it's got for basically different things that people prompted. So I'm going to put my prompt in here and that's, I want to create the thumbnail for this actual video that we're doing now. So I want a cartoon style image with a male character positioned on the left hand side because I want to put my text on the right. And this guy is going to be editing a video. So let's go generate. And this looks pretty good. It's not quite what I'm looking for, but let me come across. Obviously I need to make sure that I've got the sizing right. So I want to come down and I want the widescreen, the 16 by nine, which is the size and dimensions of a YouTube thumbnail. So then we can go generate again. Okay, so then some of the words it doesn't like here. Now this is one of my issues that I have with Firefly and that's that certain words that it, it basically has its stock footage album, which I believe is called Adobe Elements or something like that. And basically the Adobe stock footage site has some limitations on what they do and do not want to use. So because this is connected to that, they don't want to get done for any copyright or logo use or anything like that. So probably YouTube is going to be restricted here. So it's not going to display anything to do with YouTube on the screen itself. And that's probably what it said with the error message. So I quite like some of these. I think this is actually a pretty good one here. But what you can do is actually make some changes. So we could say we want it to be more artistic and maybe we want some different effects on here. Maybe you want different tones. And you can also change the prompt to try and generate a different type of image. So let's just try that one more time. Okay, so it's literally generated the same image again. So all of the changes I did didn't do anything. So if you wanted to generate a different image, you would need to change this slightly. So I could say cartoon style manga image. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So I actually really like this one. So you would keep playing around with things to try and find what's right for you. But I think either of these, just for this example, I would probably go a bit deeper. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to go with this one. So we're going to want to come down and go to add text and more. And that's going to bring you across to Adobe Express, which again is free. There are upgrades to both of these tools, but I've never had to do it. So what you're going to want to do is add some text to this. So again, you could try to do this inside and get the AI to do it for you. But personally, when trying to generate the images and the text together, it never goes well. So as I said, you're free to try, but personally, it looks much better when you do it separately. 
So what I'm going to want to do is add some text. So we can look at the different text here. Otherwise, I can just come up and go add your text and I can add some text here. And we'll go capitals. And what am I going to say? So I want AI thumbnail or made with AI. So then I'm going to want to change the color of this. Increase the thickness of that. Make it stand out a bit more. Maybe you're going to get a fatter. There we go. Let's make this a bit bigger. And that's pretty good. Now I want to make this. I can't really read this very well. So I'm going to put something behind that. So I'm going to go to the elements. And go for shapes. I'm just going to grab that one. And you can stretch that out. And then I want some rounder corners on it. And I want it to be white. And I want it to be slightly see-through. Let's drag that down. And then that will be behind. And that stands out a little bit more. Now, obviously, the white on a white background doesn't stand out that much. So maybe I would want to change that background to be a different color. So we could say, OK, what do we want to do? more colors. Let's try some yellow. Maybe that stands out. Maybe a bit of red. It stands out. I really like the white though. So I'm going to go with that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the fill of this. So we've got more colors. And let's get down to some of the yellows and see what we've got there. That stands out a little bit more. Let's go to custom. And we can just play around with this. There we go. And how does that look? So you can keep playing around with this to try and make it stand out even more. You could add different effects. You could add some shadows. You could perhaps add additional shapes. So let's go we'll add a shadow to make that stand out a little bit more. And there you go. You can already see we've got something that's really, really good here. So I want some shapes. So let's go. OK, so not a huge amount of options there. So let's look for assets in here. OK, so I think maybe this one. We'll just turn that around a bit. Resize. And we could just pop that there. So draw some attention, makes maybe people want to click. And there we go. I think that's great. So then all we would have to do is download that. And then you have your thumbnail. So really nice and easy. Great graphic in the background that's original and just bespoke for you. And then you've also got your text. You saw how easy it was to add that. So that is the method using Firefly by Adobe and then just using their editor afterwards to add the text. And it's all completely for free. The next method and one that I personally use the most is a combination of ChatGPT and Canva. Dali is now built into ChatGPT itself and I find it to be much better at generating images than Firefly. Unless you want to do generative images, which is a bit more advanced. But personally, I like to keep things as simple as possible. So let's jump into ChatGPT and I'll show you how I currently use it. OK, so once inside ChatGPT, you want to make sure that you've got ChatGPT4 with Dali set up. Now, at the time of recording this video, you do need the pro account, which is the $20 account, I believe. And ChatGPT is a great tool for content creators and YouTubers in general. It's going to help you with those scripts, especially if you're doing faceless videos. And it's also just a great creators tool, both for your thumbnails, helping when you're stuck, helping for ideas. And as I said, your scripts as well. So you will need at the time of recording this, the $20 per month version. So if you don't want to pay for anything, then obviously Firefly is going to be a better option for you. Or just wait a little bit. I believe they're going to be releasing this to everybody else very, very soon anyway. So it depends when you're watching this video. So once inside, as I said, select ChatGPT4 with Dali and then paste your prompt inside. Again, we're going to use the same prompt for the cartoon style image with the male character positioned on the left because I want the text on the right. And he's going to be editing a YouTube video. 
All right, so this looks good. Obviously, the person is on the wrong side, which is something that ChatGPT seems to do. But you see that the, the detail in ChatGPT is much better. Now, I need to say try again. Obviously, I forgot to tell ChatGPT to create it in the rectangular thumbnail size. So what I want to now do is say try again. So there we go. Try again with the man on the left and in size 16 by 9, which is the thumbnail size. And then go. So there, there we go. We have a, a great image. It's the right size. But again, ChatGPT hasn't put it on the left. Now, I can keep trying it and I know it will eventually do it. But let's say I really liked this image and I didn't want to wait for the next one. In Canva, we can flip this around. So it's not such a big deal. But we can always ask it again and say... And there we have it, an absolutely fantastic thumbnail. And again, it's still not done it on the left. So we're going to do it on Canva this time because I actually really like this image. So I'm going to take this graphic, graphic across because it's really good. The thumbnail looks good that he's actually creating on the screen. And the detail of this character compared to, say, Adobe Firefly is much, much better. So we're going to download that this one by selecting this. And then we're going to pull it inside of Canva. Okay, so once inside Canva, the first thing you're going to want to do is come into the plus tab at the top and then just select YouTube thumbnail. Type in thumbnail and YouTube thumbnail will come up and then you'll be able to start creating a design. Now you'll see they've got lots of things down the side, the elements, the text, the branding, all of your different tools will be down here. And again, you just need the free account. I have a paid account but you can just use the free account. Yes, they have templates, but these templates are boring and they're not going to get very many clicks unless you're in a, a very low competition niche. So you need to make sure your thumbnails are original, which is why we're doing this with AI. So the image that we got from inside ChatGPT, we just want to drag into here and it will automatically drop it inside our Canva along with anything else that you happen to have generated. Now I could drag this to make sure that it fits. Or if I want to make it the background, which I do, I'm just going to select it and come down to set as background and that will automatically resize it. Then we can go, OK, I want to flip this if you wanted to make it horizontal. Remember, we said that we wanted the guy on the left because uh, we maybe we're going to have the text on the right. Completely up to you. But obviously you saw in chat GPT, sometimes it doesn't play ball in terms of moving the character around. So we can just do that inside of Canva. Obviously, if you've got text on the screen, when you flip it, it will make it backwards. It will invert it. So just something to be aware of there. So now we've got our background set. The first thing I'm going to want to do, just like we did in Adobe Firefly, is go text. Select a header or you can literally pick any of these text fonts that are pre-made for you. And there's some great ones here, but I'm going to do what we did the last time and just go with the text. AI thumbnail. Select it, come up. I think we are going to do the same as we did the last time, which was yellow. And then we're going to go to effects and we're going to go background. We could have shadow and different things going on. The one thing I would say that in terms of text effects, actually Adobe Firefly may be better for adding multiple text effects. But we're just going to add the outline here anyway. So for example, if I wanted the outline and I wanted shadow, I haven't really found a way to do that. If you guys know how to do that, then let me know in the comments below. So there we go. And then I'm going to select white, actually black. And then we're going to go bolder. And then I want a more chunky text for this. So we're going to go for perhaps try this one. Quite like that one. See that one. Okay, so I think I prefer this one. So we're then going to make this much, much bigger. Bring it down again. I quite liked it in the same position that we had the last time because I don't actually want to cover this screen part up here. So I'm just going to make this much bigger down here. I'm then going to go to the shapes. And we'll just bring a general shape across. And we'll bring it across. Select the color, we'll go white. Select the borders, I want rounded corners like I did the last time. Excellent. 
And then I'm going to go and I'm going to make this slightly more transparent. Not too transparent. And then I'm going to go position. And I want to send it backwards. So, okay, I think that looks pretty good. I could pull it forward a bit more, but I, I quite like being able to see more of the background. So maybe we want to make the transparency, the opacity a little bit more dense. There we go. 70, I think, looks pretty good. And again, I want to bring in some sort of clickable arrow. So I'm going to go with arrow. I actually like this one here that I've already got up. So let's bring that one in. And we'll go with position. And we'll bring it forward to the front. We'll make it a little bit smaller. Bring it up. Bring it up. And we'll just adjust it so we can move it around a little bit. And then we'll have him there. And I think that looks good. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And there we go. I actually really like that image. Yeah, I think that one really works. That looks really, really good. So obviously you can keep playing around with the text to make it punch out a bit more. Maybe I would decide that the yellow didn't work with this background as much. Maybe I want to go red, white to stand out, maybe try a different arrow. But I think as a whole, this looks like a great very clickable thumbnail. You can make it smaller so you can see if you can see still see it on a smaller screen. So obviously a lot of thumbnails are going to be seen on mobile devices. So if you can just make that smaller and you can still see everything and it stands out, then actually I think that's a really, really good thumbnail. And then all you have to do is go to share and then you click download and you can download it directly on your computer ready to upload into YouTube. Now, if you would like full step-by-step -step training on building profitable YouTube channels, then check out the links in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you inside the next video.